presentation. And now you can see my screen, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Can you see my screen? Mm, yes. You okay. Me? We're yeah. done with activity 7, with activity 8, yeah. with activity 9. We have to continue with activity 10, right? Mm. Yep. Yes. So now, complete the sentences with the defining or non-defining relative clause. Remember to use the correct punctuation. Okay? So The Grape of Broth is a famous American novel. It is said during the Great Depression. The Grape of Broth, which is famous. Uh, American novel, Coma, is said during the Great Depression. Number two. Read and complete. This is a great restaurant in Brooklyn. Uh, that you can eat the best Mexico soup. That? Que tu puedes? Or where? Mm, what do you that? Mm, I don't think so. It would be the where because it's a place where you can eat the best matzo. Ah, where? Okay, yeah. good. Number three. Mm, which is a word still the feeling? Which, okay, but you use a comma or not? Yes. Yeah, remember, when you have the commas, you never use that. Okay? But when okay. you have the comma, you can use which. Yeah, but when you have commas, never that. Never, never, never. Next, number four. Mm -hmm. Can I Uh, uh, comma, uh, who won this actress mm. at the penny party of the award ceremony? Comma? Comma? What else? Who? 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 Again? No. Want? No. Had wanted to be a doctor. Okay? Do you remember yeah. this grammar? You yeah. had wanted to be a doctor. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Any questions? No, right? They would say the Burj Khalifa. The Burj Khalifa. That was the, the other word. Khalifa. Yeah, and the other is Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. Lawrence. Yeah, Lawrence. Eleven. If you don't remember that topic, I'll send you the presentation so you can read and you can understand because it's easy. Next, what advice or criticism would you give to this situation? Complete the sentence with the word in the box and our is here and correct the form of the verb in parentheses. There may be more than one possible. So now, your friend is <laughs> coughing and sneezing after a walking all day in the country without warm clothes yet what do you think the first one you have to use the word check it's advisable to check the weather before you go out Oh, nice. It's advisable to check the up here. In this case, you don't say weather because the th is a, a d sound, like d with vibration. Weather, weather. yes. Weather before you go out. But where, when you say go out, where is the t? Uh, go out. Go out, yes. Number two. You? Mm, 
You should have. You should have. Yes, you should have. Should have. Mm. You should have. Ah, uh, wear. <laughs> you should have wear. Worn. A coat and a scarf. But now read it. Read it with fluency. You, you should. You, you should, should have, have worn. Worn a coat and a scarf. Yes. She clicked the reply to all button when sending a friend personally made at work. It. Mm. Uh, it's understandable. Mm -hmm. uh, to feel embarrassed about things like that. that. Yeah. Number four, you. Mm. You should have sent. <laughs> A personal email. <coughs> oh, sorry, my bad. You should. You should have. You should have sent mm. a personal email at work. Yes, and I feel very really lonely and depressed at the moment. It. Mm. It's good to see friends. And the last one, you. Mm. You. You advisable. You good. You should have. You shouldn't have. Or you understandable. Okay. Uh, you, sh mm. you should. Mm. Have told me. You should have told me sooner. Any questions? Mm. Mason. 11. Oh, we're done with 11 part. 12. Find the incorrect mistakes. So in the four, uh, the four incorrect sentences, check the two correct sentences. Okay, so the first one then, where is the mistake? First read, first read. Mm, Dan cut. Did you call back him? Yeah, is it okay? Mm. Dan cut me. Call him. Did you call? Call him back. Call him back. I promise to copy everyone in this time. What do you think? To copy everyone? I mean, I promise copy everyone. I promise everyone to copy this time. Okay, I prom. Mm -mm. It's okay. What about three? Okay. Well, for me, it's okay because we say I promise to do that. I promise to. Yeah, it's okay. That's why it's amazing. I promise to copy everyone. I promise to. For example, when you send an email, then you say copy me, please. Because you want to resend email to you. You see what I'm saying? For example, you have to send an email to uh, Pepita. And Juan says, please copy me. It means you have to send the email again. But in this case, Juan's mm -hmm. email. So without preposition. No, yes. Just copy, copy me. No, no, no. Copy to me. Ah, ah, well, you mean, yeah, promise to, but copy and without preposition, of course. Yep. You say, okay. I promise to do something. So I promise to copy you next time. Because when you say, hey, please, copy me, means send the information. 
Mm-hmm. Next, what about your essay? Did you hand it in? Hand it in? Yes. Now, Tana has probably died. <laughs> My students are calling me. No, they have to wait. Is it an order? Number four. Uh, I have Claro. Claro, you have a Claro connection. Claro internet. Yeah, but I, I have probably at night. <laughs> they are so, okay. Well, now I have probably in the morning, just 7 a.m. in the morning. I don't know what they are doing, but I had a problem with them. Mm. Did you run Jonas into a into a the cafe this afternoon? Is that okay? Into what do you think, guys? With a no. Oh, uh, with a window. With into because the prop the ver the phrasal verb is run into. I run into. Ah, I found it. Yes, to parse run into run into Juan. To. Yes. Next. My parents like Susie. She gets along with him. What do you think? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Um, mm, my parents okay. like Susie. She gets along with him. Yeah, it's okay. It's perfect. Number five. Uh, Number six. The music is too loud. Can you turn it down? Down. Turn it down. Yeah. Turn it down. Huh? Yeah, but you don't say turn it. You say turn it. Turn it uh, down. So turn. what happened here? Uh, run into him. Uh, <laughs> I I wrote Juan and it was Jonas. Uh. Okay. Did you understand? Remember that this is a parable, separable, inseparable, separable, inseparable. And this is okay because you say promise to do something. Did you understand? Yeah, I think that the, the copy and the bird copy and don't have preposition. preposition. No, after the no. It, it is like when you say answer, answer to you. No, or you say, for example, Ask to you, for example, I want to ask you, ask to you a question. No. Mm -hmm. And I want to show you something interesting that I was teaching yesterday. Uh, copy, copy these papers or this, uh, this uh, paper for me. You can do it for me. But you never say to but me. If, oh, copy me is, uh, if I don't have an um, object. Oh, yes, you don't need it. Oh, where is it? Did you know that the verb is a verb? The word verb. The verb, what, what happened? The word verb is a verb. The verb is a verb? Yeah, verb. It's not a noun? It's also a noun. Verb, use... Can I use that? Use a word that is not conventionally used. For example, any English now can be verbed, but some more resistant than others can be verbed. Oh, the word that is not conventionally used as a verb. That is the meaning of a verb. As a verb. Okay. Can, can I ask, uh, can I verb this now? Yes. Can I use the <laughs> verb means... Usar como verbo. Yeah. Can I verb this now? <laughs> yes. Can I verb? And this word. You know that I that I always say. How do we pronounce this word? Minute. Minute, right? Minute. But in a formal context, you... It, I mean, it, it is the time, right? Minute, minuto, time. But minute, when it refers to... A small, a trifling, something that is trifling, you pronounce minute. You got it? Yes. Minute means as a net minu, mi, minuto, 
minutos and also as an adjective because this is a noun. But as an adjective means trifling. Do you know what trifling means? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, you say minute. Minute. Mm. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, this is a minute time that I spend with you, for example, you can say with someone. And you got along very well with someone. Minute. And this is a a business word. A business word. Or a very polite. Yep. Mm -hmm. Minute. Minute. Maybe you're watching a series yeah. because my note. Yes, because I was watching a series with a student tomorrow. It's called Better Better Cold Soul. Have you watched that movie or that series? No. Yeah, with Adam Sandler. No, it is like Breaking Bad. This the another, and a spin off and a spin off. Breaking Bad. Have you watched Breaking Bad? No, no. Breaking Bad. No. Breaking Bad. I'm gonna show you those words because they are so, so interesting. You can take a screenshot. Um, one second here. I'm gonna explain the meaning and then you can copy because those words are a very useful in English language. It is here. For example, how do you say regañar in English? Somebody off. Okay. Take a screenshot probably here. Can you see my screen? Yep. Mm -hmm. For example, banister. Do you know what a banister is? No. Uh, the banister, look at the word banister. Uh, when you have the stairs, las barandas del banister, del, del stairs, son banisters. You got it? Mm-hmm. Then we have tell somebody off means to sacarle los trapitos sucios también. Okay? You see my point? You get what I'm saying? So my mother uh, told me off. Yes, when I was at the party. When I was late, um, when, when I come, come uh, home late. Yes, tell somebody off. Tell me off. She told me off in this case. She told me off yesterday. Told me of regañar, yeah. decirte cosas como la. Tell me. Piss me off. No, piss me off, no. Es como decir este que me jode. <laughs> es un poco fuerte. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes, ya me está jodiendo, está diciendo. Me jodió ayer. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, tiene otro significado. In a bad way. No. No. Or no. maybe, depending on the situation, because piss off is molestar. Molestar, fastidiar, pero más fuerte. Uh, and, or you can say, I'm pissed off, estoy bien molesto. Pero tell off, and say, hey, Pepita, you, you, don't clean, you don't clean the house, you don't do anything. Why are you so late today when you went at the party? I'm telling, I'm telling you off. Te estoy regañando. But, te digo, I'm, piss, I'm pissing you off. Es que te estoy fastidiando, pero diciéndote, fregándote, ¿no? Más fastidiándote, incomodándote siempre. No sé si lo puedes relacionar con eso, pero... ¿No es uh, bullying? ¿Piss me off? Mm, no. Nope. Piss me off, por ejemplo. Tú vas a usar piss off, so, piss somebody off, cuando la persona te, te insulta, te molesta, te fastidia, te acosa, todo ese tipo de cosas. Pero, uh, tell somebody off es cuando alguien te dice, te regaña por algo malo que has hecho, nada más. Mm -hmm. Esa es la diferencia. No confundir piece off, que es más fuerte, ¿no? Con tell somebody off. Ok. Mm -hmm. And then we have phone. Phone over. Phone over. Phone over somebody, which means... Alagar, adular a alguien. ¿Ok? Stop, mm. phone, over him. Ar, alagar a alguien, adular. So, uh, you are the phone bad. over. Uh, 
that person put all over me? Put over me. Yes, it's inseparable. Inseparable. Without preposition. Yes, fun over somebody. Yes, without the preposition. Have you watched uh, Mother Family? Mother Family. No. No. Okay. It's a cartoon? No, no, no. It's a series. Then no. I'll show you. Then I'll show you. But remember this word, banister. Tell somebody off. Fun over, reshore. What is reshore? No. Mm. To explain something is okay. We just say, hey, Denise, everything is gonna be okay. I am reassuring you. You see my point here? Mm. Yep. Reassuring, yes. because the reassure. verb is reassure, yes. The verb reassure. is reassure, yeah. Then we have a straight out. A straight out is to say and to ask. It is like what you say. Ir al grano. Para decir o para preguntar. A straight out. You got it? Mm -hmm. Ir al grano, pero para decir o para preguntar. No para iniciar algo. Ok. Vayamos al grano y te pones a hacer cosas. No. Para decir y para preguntar. Usamos mayormente el straight out con el verbo come. For example. Pepita yesterday came straight out with a question. Huh? With an important question. She told me if I wanted to go like that. Yep. Mm. Did you understand? You can use the word come, of course. Come straight out. Venir a preguntar o decir directamente. Okay. In the other frame was... About, um, um, which one? Tell me the secret. Um, um, ah, well, you say, well, she, yeah, maybe you can say, maybe you, maybe somebody told you a secret, right? And you, without intention, you told the secret anyone else. And then, hey, yesterday, Juanita. Came straight out with a question of, or she she came straight out and she asked me if I said her secret. Y no preguntarme directamente. Vino al grano y me dijo esto. Sin But when I want to stop the conversation and. Uh, I the same? Straight out. Yeah, um, say, please, straight out. I don't have time. Straight out with it. Straight out with it. I don't have time. Straight out uh, with it. Okay, I can use it. Yeah, sure. Straight out with that. Um, yes. It could go to business. <laughs> yes. You know, straight straight out with it. Vergano con eso. Straight out with it. So, you know, I don't have time to spend here. Mm -hmm. Then we have the word long. Long means... Anelar. Long to do something. Long to do something. Desear. For example, you imagine that you cannot have a baby. You say, I long to have a baby in the future. It is like want. I, I long to have a baby. Yes, I long to have a baby. I yes. long to speak better. <laughs> I want to speak better in English. It is like want, but means anelar. Which is different. Es un deseo. El otro es querer. Yeah. Desire? Yeah. Like, el long, solito, long, es un anhelo, un deseo. Yeah. Like, desire. Did you understand? Mm, like, like dream? dream? Mm -hmm. mm. Like, like dream, dream something? But I long to. I long to. I dreamed about this. Yes. Long to do something. Mm, okay. Did you write it, right? Or maybe I can send I can send the presentation. I can send the presentation. And single handed means hecho por una sola persona. Single handed. But um, uh, with a hand. No no no. Single handed. Hecho por una sola persona. Yes? Okay. 
Yes. Yeah, so when you when you say he's a a one one a one handed man, un hombre de una mano, one handed man. In this case is single handed product, un producto hecho solamente por una sola persona. Lo han hecho con una mano, pero no se refiere, sino que la mano de la persona es como que una y la otra persona es otra. You see my point? Mm -hmm. Yes. Single handed. All the more. Now, let, read, read the sentence. I'm happy. That my sister is getting married and I I all the more excited because I'm going to be a bride. Bridesmaid. The expression, I am all the more excited. Y yo estoy aún más emocionado. All the more. All the more. You can say, for example, Wow, I was, I was all the more happy to have seen the movie with you. you got the part? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Next, a stickler. That's another difficult word. A stickler for something or a stickler means insistente or intenso. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can say, hey, you are so stickler. I don't want to go on a date with you. Is it yeah, but it's a bad way. Uh, no, it's an informal way. Negative. Word. Yeah, but no, it's, it's negative. negative. It's a negative word. You're a stickler, yes. And also... Uh, it's me. like a pegajoso stick. Like stick. A stickler, a stickler, a stickler, a stickler. Yeah, it could be intense. Like a sticker? <laughs> no, no, a stickler. No, no, a stickler is different. But a sticker, no. <laughs> a stickler means intenso, eh, obsesivo, se podría decir. Tú puedes decir, ¿no? Que eres bien pegajoso. ¿Ese pegajoso a qué se refiere? ¿De que se pega? ¿O pegajoso de que. De que se pega a ti todo el tiempo. Ah, uh, you can say, okay. You are a stickler, sí, pero le dices que es un pegajoso porque es un intenso, ¿no? Porque está siempre contigo, ¿ya? Yeah. Tiene yes. sentido. También Stickler. decimos cuando jugamos, hey, you are a stickler for the rules. ¿Qué quiere decir? Eres bien picón. A stickler for the rules. Mm -hmm. Por ejemplo, you, we are playing something and then you say, well, but that is not the rule because you owe me another, a one extra point, maybe. You are so a stickler for the rules. Eres bien picón. Es significado tiene. A stickler for the rules. You got it? Yes. Beyond stickler. reproach. Then we have beyond reproach, which means perfect. Perfect. Okay. Then we have this word as cold, which means to to tell somebody off. Is another way that they tell off. The same. Mm -hmm. Synonym. Scott. Synonym. Yes, it's called. And then we have this word mm -hmm. like go bananas. To go bananas is to do stupid things, even when you are angry or when you are uh, happy. Yep. I heard that uh, you lost your marbles, no? It could be, or you can say you go, you go nuts. It's another one. Okay. Bananas, bananas. Bananas. Yes, it's the same. Yep, you got the expressions. I hope so, right? Yes. Let's come back. I'll send you the presentation in any case. One second. And I explain again the grammar. And even though when I explain, they didn't know the pronouns who, which. Uh, Roxanne is in advance three. Three. Uh, or maybe we can do, we can work with his book. And maybe I know, and then she's going to get 20. And we can do it. If you want, of course. Or maybe we continue with this amazing book, which I prefer no, to work with this one. 
because this is you better. Should. Yeah, this is yeah. better. I have read this. This is better. So now let's begin with the first unit, I think. We start the uh, advanced one. Yes, you. Yeah, we will start the advanced one. Okay, let's begin. You have to speak a lot in this book, so let's go on. Okay, so who do you think you are? This is our topic. In this unit, you will learn language to talk about your identity. Okay? You will read about identity when speaking a second language. For example, in this, uh, have you realized that when you speak in another language, it is like when you have another personality? Or not? Or do you feel the same? Mm, no, I feel that I can express my ideas uh, sometimes better than yeah. Spanish. And I, I don't feel embarrassed. And in some, some phrases that I, I use, um, but in Spanish is um, a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> it's my mo like mother tongue. <laughs> If yeah. not, uh, I feel embarrassed when I I have to say something. But right. in another language, is uh, is a uh, a good way to to express uh, that uh, that I I can share with my tongue, uh, my mother tongue with your mom, language or with your native language. Yes, uh, and also, did you realize that maybe you have another voice? Or yes. <laughs> It's another yeah, in Chinese, in Chinese, <laughs> yeah, you have like another voice. And I have you... to think when I, I talk in, in Chinese. Mm -hmm. And also in, in English, I have to to raise my, my tongue in some questions or, or sentences. Yeah, so it's kind of different. So we're going to talk about that in this unit. Next, listen to immigrant talking about how his identity has changed. The identity, for example, if, if you live uh, in South America, when, when for example, flu, uh, free, free food, everyone wants to eat because it's for free, right? Mm -hmm. They are like, like vultures. Do you, do you know what vulture means? Vulture. Vultures. Vulture. Yeah, they're this. like vultures. I want to eat because it's for free. But in the U.S., they don't. They don't behave like that. They don't care if they are given free food. But this is good for you because you can have all of them for you. Because the food there is um, it's not delicious and here. <laughs> <laughs> no, imagine but for example when, when I uh, see um uh, um uh, there are some um stores in cell and the people um uh, change his, uh, their behavior and they get uh, they get crazy yeah they go bananas they go bananas they, they go, go nuts one. they go nuts they go bananas they lose their marbles <laughs> yes and for example you live in a condom right you live in a condom and then you have a free pool because you pay for the pool in your in your rent, right? Mm -hmm. They prefer to go to a private pool. <laughs> they don't want to use the the pool for in that community. So this is good for really? you. Yeah, this is good for you. So this is what I'm saying when we say that immigrants about how mm -hmm. his identity change. Yeah, because when they come back to South America, they change his behavior. Uh -uh. They feel like I'm more American than you. You see my point? Yes. Write a comment about peer pressure. Mm -hmm. What is peer? Do you know? No. Um, for example, if you are 12 years old and your partner is 12 years old, he is your peer. You got the one? Mm. ¿Discípulo? No. Nope. Con género, algo así. ¿Qué tiene tu misma edad? Él es tu peer. De la misma generación. Uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Learn about stereotype. Stereotypes. And now watch a video about personal identity. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 
Do you read? Okay, I will ask you this question. Okay, do you read different type of text in different ways? How think about a novel, a dictionary, and a magazine? So when you read, for example, a novel, you use the same technique or the same way for when you read a a, a magazine, maybe? No, and I think I, I can. Ah, well, the, when I read a book, uh, I like to to start the first page. I, I want I like to to learn a lot all, all the all the book, mm. but it's but if uh, it is um, only a magazine, I I usually read what I I like to read. Yeah, the session that, that I, I really need to. Okay. Okay, so before we the meeting is over, click again in the link and we continue with the next part. Yeah? Okay. Yes. Okay, so now, Denise, you are going to watch a video about the personal identity. My identity is based on where I'm from, and I'm from Brazil. My identity is quite mixed. I grew up in Greece, I'm half Greek and half French, and I'm currently living in London. It's hard to say what my identity is, you know, um, it's because I'm still, I think I'm still building it, uh, because it's based on all my experiences that I've had in my entire life. I think being Colombian is part of my identity, even if I live abroad for a long time. I think speaking Japanese language is one of my uh, most important part of identity because uh, only Japanese people speak Japanese language in the world. My identity is very linked to books. I've always read a lot since I was little. My parents used to buy us um, lots of books to me and my brother and my sister. So I would definitely say that I'm a reader. I'm definitely Korean because it kind of is my first time to study abroad and I, I sometimes I feel I want to eat our traditional food like kimchi so uh, kind of desperately so at the time I feel uh, I'm Korean It makes you different from each other country it gives you something speci special you're not the same as an European, as an American, or as an Asian people. So it gives you something that you own, even your accent when you speak another language, or your food, your music, your dance. I feel more Brazilian when I'm speaking English because I need to go back to my roots uh, as I'm not speaking already in my own language. About uh, being Libyan, um, uh, I should be proud of where I come from. But it's not necessarily that now I have to be more Libyan than before because um, this this is my part of my identity. Um, this is my nation, nationality. Uh, now I'm Libyan. Uh, after ten years, I'm still Libyan, even if I'm uh, away from home. I think when I'm in the UK, I feel more Spanish than when I'm in Spain. It will be nice to have like a neutral accent. But sometimes it's difficult because my native language is Spanish, 
so sometimes I can't pronounce the words perfectly because Spanish is always there, so it's a little difficult. But for me, it's not important to speak in English or British accent or American accent. Just it's important to me to be understood. I think it's it's a beautiful thing to to have an accent from your. Um, I mean, which shows where you're from. For me, I I like to be asked where you come from, and uh, people ask me that because of my accent. For me, it's not very important to sound like a native speaker because I think the accents are kind of cute and they are the they define who you are. So I'm Spanish and I'm never going to stop being Spanish, and therefore my accent shows where I'm from. And uh, for me, it's important to speak with good grammar rather than with a perfect accent. I think I'm the same in both my language and English uh, because of my fluency. Uh, I started when I was eight and that's make it really easy to communicate in both language and just be myself. I'm the same person when I speak in Japanese or English, but I'm, uh, there's many differences of greeting. I've never done kiss or hugging with my friends, but it was first time to do it in England. And in Japan, I just do say hello or just bow and there's certain distance with my friends. I think when I speak in English I'm a bit different to when I speak in Spanish because obviously um, since I live in the UK I, I'm also adopting and imitating certain behaviors and things that English people do so definitely that changes the way I am. For example in Spain we're less apologetic than we are in England. Personality doesn't have anything to do with language because you can show how you feel with your movements the tone of your voice, the movements of your hands, uh, but jokes are difficult. I think I'm, I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying because I try to use this kind of same kind of joke. Sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. And I think okay, that's enough. That's enough. Okay, Denise, uh, did you did you understand what they were saying, right or not? Yes. So, did you find it easy to understand no native speakers? Mm. Or is the same for you? Sometimes when um, they use a lot of slang. Yeah, it's difficult, right? No, but I mean in general. For example, yes. if, when, yeah, I mean in general, when they speak, when you talk to a native speaker, and when you talk to a native speaker, no native and native, okay? So you understand more when you talk to with a native speaker, uh, you you understand better a native speaker. Yeah, than uh, my partners. <laughs> <It's difficult. laughs> yeah, because, because they don't don't pronounce the, the words oh, <laughs> very well. That's, that's me. <laughs> that's weird, you know, because when you are a non-native speaker, you understand better another non-native speaker. Oh, that's weird. This is the first time that somebody says something like that. Okay, let's continue. So, do you remember our speaking activities in with the simulation here? So mm. now, this book yes. has that activity in the book. So, identify each type of group in the pictures and say which similar groups you belong to. For example, what kind of group is this one? Then there are students. There are a group of students. What about the second picture? Mm, there are volleyball players. Volleyball players. Repeat after me. Volleyball. Volleyball. Yep. What volleyball about? players. Volleyball players. Picture number three. Mm, I think uh, there are um, friends that. Uh, just uh, sucking up the atmosphere. Yes, sucking the atmosphere. Sin miedo. Number four. What kind of group is this? Um, co-workers. Co-workers. And number five? Um, a kind of people. Um, see the... Uh, citizens. The what, about the word, what about the word citizens? Uh, citizens. Citizens. 
Yes. Ajá, uh, can I say the desfile, viendo the, okay. the desfile, the marcha? The march. You can say the march. The march? Yes, it's the same. Google it. Or there is another word, parade. I heard, uh, can I say I heard of citizens? Uh -huh. that, that. Yes, you can do that. You can do that. And then you can say like parade. Parade. Can you see my, my dictionary? No? Nope. Yes. Parade. And then the other is march. You can say marching band. The marching group is a group of musicians who march at the same mm -hmm. time as playing their instrument. They don't have the that is people that I use uh, when I talk about a group of people, a citizen is a herd. Like this, una horda de personas. Yes. A herd of citizens. Yes, of course, una horda. Es un conjunto gentío. Okay. A lot of people. Yes, look at it. A large group of people that is considered together as a group. A herd. Great yeah, pronunciation, okay. you know, because some of my students say herd instead of saying herd. So I understood when you said the word. Nice. Okay. Look at the pictures. Okay, picture one, two, and three. And answer these two questions. Okay. Which one or which of the pictures had an influence on your identity. Yeah, I think that uh, all the people that you share your time and, and they have influence uh, with your personality, your, your um, the way you, you behave. So you would you would choose picture number? Um, I would choose um with my friends. Picture three. Okay. If I spend more time uh, with them. Ah, okay. But uh, some people spend more time with uh, with uh, their co-workers. Mm -hmm. With the co-workers. Okay. Cool. Oh, if I I um yeah, <laughs> I will spend more time with my partners. With your partners. At, at New York City. Your classmates, yeah, your classmates, your partners. Cool, cool. Listening. The following factors can all influence on personality identity. Number then from one to eight in order of importance. Number one is the most important so for you. Which one? Family. Uh, tell me. Family. 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 Okay. Number two. Um, um, interest. Interests. Vamos a practicar esta palabra porque es la segunda vez que estamos luchándola. Interest. No, interests. Yes. Interest <laughs> es interest. 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 Yes. Interesting. Interesting. Interesado. Interested. Yes, interested. Great. Okay, number okay. three. Quick code. Study, clothes, friends, values, your language. Um, friends. Friends. Four. No, no. I changed my mind. I, I, first one is um, family, um, values, interest. Uh, friends, um, language, job. No, um, before job studies. Seven and eight. Uh, okay, yeah. yes. Uh, I agree with you, I think. I agree. I agree. Next, listening. To the first part of a podcast interview with a Mexican man who has moved to the U.S. Choose the thing in the list, okay, in exercise A, that he says were important for his sense of identity in the past. Does he mention anything not on the list? So you need to focus on this part, okay?
Today, I'm talking to Armando Garola about how he defines who he is. Armando is 28 and married. He's Mexican, and he lives in Miami, Florida. Armando, how long have you lived in the United States? For almost two years. When you were living in Mexico, which factors were most important to your sense of personal identity? Well, number one was definitely my family. In Mexico, family values and traditions are extremely important. And then I guess number two for me was my job. Which was? Actually, I was studying and working. I was an architecture student, but I also had a job in a construction company. Work was always more important than studying. And why was your job so important to your sense of identity? Well, in Mexico, your job really defines your social status, so it's really important to us to have a good job. Okay, I see. And what else influenced your personal identity? Probably my social group. What things gave you and your friends a common identity? Well, we had similar family backgrounds and values, and also similar interests and life goals. Sure. So your family, your job, and your social group. Yes. Oh, and the food. Food? <laughs> Why food? Because I never wanted to eat anything that wasn't Mexican food. When I traveled, I was unhappy if I couldn't get it. <laughs> okay, then this. Does he mention anything not on the list? Yes, food. Food. Ah, one second. And which one did he mention? Did he mention clothes? Uh, did he mention uh, values? Friends? No. Uh, Friends? Um, interest, family, job. A family and job. Oh, what is missing here? Which one? Friends, mothers, interest, family, and job. Okay, cool. Now, you, before you, before you listen again, which is not necessary. In general, how does Armando say he has changed since he moved to to Miami. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? You can project analyst. Yes. Okay. Which specific factor in his sense of identity have changed and why? Do you remember? You want to listen again? I cannot listen to you. The first one. The first one. Well, the first one is not okay. He is more open to new ideas. Yeah. Next part. Vocabulary. Personal identity. Believe that you learn from your family. This is. Social status, life goal, family, uh, family values. values. Family values. The feeling mm -hmm. of who you are. Um, sense of identity. Yeah, sense okay. of identity. Position in society, class. Uh, social status. Social status. Status. The kind status. Of, yes, the kind of family you come from. Uh, family background. Yes. The things you hope to achieve in the future. Life goals. Yes. Social group. Social group. In English, when somebody, hey, can you tell me about your background? 
they don't want to know about your family. They want to know about your your career, your professional degree. Yep. You got it? Mm. That's, that's different. Your family background is the family, okay? The kind of family you come from. But when you go out of an interview, they say, hey, please, uh, can you tell me about your background? Well, I went to Oxford University, and then you talk about your career, your degree, the university that you went, the courses that you have taken during the years now. Yep. Yeah, my uh, CV? Your resume. Yes, of course. Resume. Yes, we prefer to say the word resume. Resume. Uh, this is the... No, no, no. This one. This is a French word. Resume. Where is it? Uh, here. A short statement of the important details of something. In the UK, we call this the CV. Yep. The curriculum vitae. Yep. Resume. Yes, but in, Amer resume. You know, in North America, we say resume. 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 Yes. Resume. Or, or your resume. CV. Okay. Next. Answer a working group's ask a question. Okay, I will ask you. Is is your family background an important part of your sense of identity? Hmm. Yes, it is. Why? Because um, the family is the, um, the first people that you are with, with them. They uh, teach you all the values that, uh, that you... Uh, all, all, and they teach you all the values and you start uh, to... your uh, personality with... Uh, with your family. Mm -hmm. Next question. Which family values uh, are important to you? Uh, family values? Um, uh, honesty? Honesty. Honesty. Oh, honesty. Okay, honesty. <laughs> to say uh, the truth always. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know how to say. <laughs> it's the same honesty. Um, um, what about what about humility? Humility. 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 Okay. Cool. Uh, cool. Next uh, Great. Grateful. Great. Okay. Gratefulness. Gratefulness. Oh, great. Gratefulness. Yes. Gratefulness. Do you and the people in your social group share the same life goal? Is that important? Mm. Uh, yes. 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 It is important uh, because um, uh, we can uh, uh, build uh, some business together. Uh, but um, I, uh, but uh, they could be uh, uh, they could have uh, different goals. But it's important uh, that they have goals uh, to to. Uh, Mm. Race oh. to success grow. to success in life to grow um, and in your life um, yes okay cool cool in English we say do business instead of saying build business yeah build no no do business. Okay, I heard that uh, in the video, and uh, they say, I built my identity. Yeah, the identity, but you say business, the word business. Okay, do business. Yes, do business. It's a collocation.
Okay, next. Okay, we're going to continue with this part and then we will stop working. First, what phrases do you know already for agreeing partially, agreeing and disagreeing? Do you remember uh, some expressions? Uh, when, when I agree. See, when you agree, uh, for example. We see eye to eye. Mm -hmm. uh, you took uh, the words uh, from my mouth. Right of my mouth. Right of my mouth. Uh, right of my mouth. And when you when you agree partially, when you agree partially, uh, I agree to disagree. I agree to disagree. And when you don't disagree, uh, it doesn't make I, sense. I said when you don't disagree means when you agree. When you don't disagree. When you disagree, I am totally disagree. I totally disagree. Uh, I. I don't think the same. I don't think so. I don't think so. So listen again and complete the phrases from the conversation. For example, well, tua, do you know maybe the phrase? Yes, tua. Extend. Options. No, no, options. This is part of your knowledge. <laughs> you don't know, you can listen. We can listen to the audio. But, Tua, the second one, uh, and no. Yes, I know. No, and number three. Um, I totally agree more. Uh, oh, could be. I'm totally agree. The, the, the last one. Okay, you are going to listen. And you are going to complete the expressions. How important is it to be an individual, to express your personal identity? Sean? I think it's really important to be yourself. If we don't have a strong sense of our own identity, then it's as if we were all made in a factory. Well, yes, to a certain extent. But don't you think we have to respect the people close to us, like our family? Yes and no. Family members should respect each other, but that also means respecting each other as individuals. I don't think your family should ever force you to dress or act in a certain way. I'm sorry, but I just don't think that's true. I think parents have the right to expect their kids to conform to certain family values. And what about at work? For example, you like to wear your hair really long, Sean, but if you get an office job, that might not be appropriate. I just don't think a job should force you to go against who you are. I would never take a job that wouldn't let me be myself. I'm afraid I can't agree. People have to make compromises. My older brother was always saying that he would never change because of a job, and he would make fun of people who did. But then he got an office job, and he had to start wearing a suit. Sean, do you think you lose your individual identity if you change your hair or clothes? Well... You don't change who you are, but you're letting other people pressure you to do what they want you to do. In a way, you're right. But if you think life is going to be exactly the way you want it, you're just going to be disappointed. I couldn't agree more. And it isn't sensible to do things that offend other people just to show how individual we are. Yeah, but... Okay, so the first sentence... Well, yes, to a certainly extent. Certain, we we'll say certain. Um, borra la t, borra la t, la e no más. Certain, certain. Yes. Um, um, yes. Number two. Yes and no. Yes and no. Number three. I'm sorry. Number four. I'm afraid. I can't I'm agree. afraid. I'm afraid. Me temo. I'm afraid. Number five. In a way, you're right, but. In a way. And the last one? I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Okay, so the first one is the partial agree, partial agree, disagree, disagree, partial agree, and agree. Okay? That was uh, another uh, audio. It was another audio? Yes. Mm. 
Ah, so because we didn't, I didn't, we didn't remember. <laughs> Lol. Okay, so before we, before we leave the session, let's review. ¿Cómo se dice llamar la atención a alguien, gritarle, regañar? ¿Qué verbo utilizo? Tell off. ¿Mm? Tell somebody off, acuérdate. Tell somebody ah. off. ¿Otra mm -hmm. forma de decir tell somebody off? I don't remember. Es cold. No memory. Es cold. Ah. Es cold. Es cold. Es cold. Es cold, yes. Cold. ¿Cómo se dice perfecto? Beyond. Re ah. Beyond reproach. reproach. Yes, beyond reproach. ¿Cómo se dice volverse loco, volverse errático? Ah. Uh, go bananas, go nuts, uh, go your marbles. Yes, go bananas. ¿Cómo se dice eh, halagar a alguien? Adularlo. Um, Start with an F. Fun. On. Over. Fun over some. Some bad. Uh. Yes. Oh, okay. Esas expresiones que te he mandado en la PPT, apréndelas. Esas las vas a escuchar en televisión, en películas y en speech. ¿Ok? Uh -huh. Yes. La misma que vimos en las películas anteriores también. Practícalas. ¿Ok? Si puedes, me avisas y te envío el link a las, para la clase de la noche. ¿Ok? 9.15. 9.15. 